Masaru, is always bullied in class because of his small body and habit of crying. However, he has recently shown a casual attitude that angers the bullies. They bully Masaru more and more brutally, but Masaru still responds to them with a smile. One of them hit Masaru in the face, causing the scar in his forehead to show. He takes off his shirt to reveal so many scars on his body that everyone panics. It turns out that two months ago, Masaru had a vacation that changed him. He wants to be like that person and always smile. That person is Narumi, who suffers from a strange disease. If he can't make someone laugh, he'll have trouble breathing. Fortunately, Masaru laughs and accidentally saves his life. Then Masaru leaves. Narumi wants to thank Masaru, but he sees Masaru surrounded by several men. Narumi rushes to attack them, but it seems they are not humans. Masaru immediately picks Narumi up and runs away. On the train, Masaru says that he is the heir to the wealthy Saiga family, but after his father's death, he has always been pursued by men in black. In addition, the Saya family also made puppets that could move like humans. Grandpa told Masaru that if his father suddenly passed away, he would have to take this case with him, and someone would come to protect him. Masaru is looking for someone named Shirogane, who works at a circus. At this moment, the men in black chased here. Narumi rushes to attack him, but to no avail. The train suddenly breaks due to a man standing on the rails. The train crashes into him, causing his body to crumble. The train slips off the rails and overturns. A man in black appears and wants to kill Masaru. He shouts the name Shirogane and Shirogane really shows up. She immediately uses Masaru's case. A puppet shows up and quickly destroys the man. The man's name is Arlequin. She hugs Masaru tightly and calls him master. She is the adopted daughter of Shoji Saiga, who is Masaru's grandfather. Shirogane and Narumi take Masaru to see a doctor who is an acquaintance of Narumi. The doctor teases him that he has a pretty girlfriend. While Narumi is complaining about his disease, an assassin appears outside. He is the one who controlled the puppets that attacked Masaru this morning. He controls the puppet to attack them, but is immediately defeated by Arlequin as well as Shirogane's puppet control technique. Shirogane used a secret technique to destroy his puppet, but the assassin sent someone to break into the clinic to arrest Masaru. However, his plan quickly fails as Narumi's appearance causes them to retreat. At this time, Narumi's disease recurred. The doctor says his disease is called Zonafa syndrome. He must make people laugh to continue living. Narumi runs to a nearby convenience store to make everyone laugh, but they are shocked instead of amused. Shirogane rushes to slap him for these ridiculous antics. Unexpectedly, her actions make everyone laugh. Narumi then takes Shirogane and Masaru to his house temporarily. In the evening, Masaru goes to the bathroom and is caught by the killers. Shirogane and Narumi hear the noise and rush out, but the assassin quickly took Masaru away. They want to call the police, but the previous assassin appears and stops them. He introduces himself as Irio, who was also hired by the Saiga clan to kill Masaru because Masaru inherited the entire Saiga fortune. He is on the slaughter team, and those who are arrested in Masaru belong to the kidnap team, which was hired to kidnap the boy. They are hired by different people. Irio offers to team up with Shirogane and Narumi to get Masaru back. Irio knows Masaru is being taken to the Saiga villa in Karuizawa. That villa is a Karakuri mansion, full of the late Saiga's heinous puppets. Narumi and Shirogane agree to team up with Irio. At this time, Masaru is brought to meet Senji, who is his uncle. Seeing his sinister smile makes Masaru feel extremely frightened. The next morning, Narumi and Shirogane burst into Senji's mansion on a motorbike. Narumi quickly takes down several enemies. Irio's group also joins them in the battle. At this moment, a woman controlling a giant puppet blocks the entrance of the mansion. Shirogane wants to fight her puppet. As a result, Arlequin can easily destroy her giant puppet. However, she has yet to show her full power. At this moment, Senji is forcing Masaru to become his adopted son for the sake of inheriting Saiga's fortune. Masaru immediately pushes Senji and runs away. The woman uses bombs thrown at Shirogane, but her plan fails and she is defeated by her own bombs. Narumi and the others are entering the mansion, but the Zonafa Syndrome attacks Narumi again. Shirogane accidentally steps on the trap and Narumi grabs her hand, causing the two to fall. He is injured quite badly and he is having trouble breathing, but Shirogane couldn't laugh even though he tried to make jokes. Suddenly, he kneels down to confess to Shirogane. Although she still didn't smile, his attack was gone. Shirogane says she isn't really a human. She was taught how to get rid of human emotions to become a professional puppeteer. That makes Narumi angry and he scolds her. At the moment, Masaru is in danger. He decides to let go of the crybaby he used to be. He jumps off the tower. Masaru accidentally falls on Irio's enemy, knocking him unconscious. 
Masaru gets up and says he will hire Irio for 10 times the price if he switches to his side. Seeing Masaru's determined gaze, Irio accepts the contract with Masaru. With Irio's help, Masaru bursts into Senji's surveillance room. But Senji uses Narumi and Shiragane's lives to force Masaru to become his adopted son. Irio says that Senji is cheating on him, and even if Masaru agrees to his request, he will still kill them. Masaru indignantly attacks Senji's arm and leg, surprising Irio. He then asks Irio to take him to the place where Narumi and Shiragane are being held. At the moment, both are locked in an iron cage. Suddenly, they see Masaru and Irio. Masaru explains that he hired Irio. The puppeteer walks in and says the game is over. He intends to cut off one of Masaru's arms, but is stopped by Narumi. Narumi begins to reveal his true strength. His powers are enhanced by spiritual force. It's called Hard Qigong. He breaks the iron cage and hits the man in the face. Then the kidnap team also comes here. Narumi rushes to attack them with his bare hands. However, Shirogane is attacked by a woman, causing Narumi to be distracted and tied up. Shirogane isn't strong enough to control Arlequin at the moment. Shirogane and Narumi ask Masaru to run away, but he refuses. Seeing Masaru's determination, Shirogane gives him the puppetry tool. It is surprising that Masaru is able to control Arlequin on the first try. At this moment, the time bomb in the mansion explodes, causing the mansion to collapse. Fortunately, Narumi is able to protect Masaru in time. It is expected that everyone will get out of this place safely, but once again Masaru falls into the fire. At this time, the Zonafa Syndrome attacks Narumi, but Shirogane can't laugh to save him. Narumi tells Irio to take Shirogane away. He then jumps below and uses his body to cover Masaru. Narumi's last words to Masaru are that he wants Masaru to always smile. The mansion begins to collapse and Narumi's body is on fire. The next morning, Masaru wakes up to find Narumi only has one arm left. Narumi was gone. A few months later, Masaru's life was back to normal. He inherited his father's fortune and received care from Shirogane. Shirogane also goes to school to protect Masaru. She is perfect in every aspect, such as cooking, fitness, and having a beautiful body that makes guys fall for her. Although she is loved by many people, she still can't smile because she couldn't smile to save Narumi. To make Shirogane happy, Masaru wants her to join a circus with him. Elsewhere, Narumi wakes up with a prosthetic hand, but he has lost all his memories. A rich guy saved Narumi by using Aqua Vitae. He is a descendant of the French aristocracy. His name is Guy Christophe Retsch. Suddenly, his body automatically trains in martial arts, which makes him remember that he studied martial arts in China. Seeing the little girl suffocated by Zanafa syndrome makes him feel familiar. It turns out that this is the hospital that treats more than 2,000 children with Zonafa syndrome. From now on, Narumi's daily job is to play with the children here and make them laugh. One evening, Narumi sees the doctors and nurses here injecting drugs. He runs to Guy and accidentally sees them questioning a kid as a criminal. He rushes to punch Guy in the face and realizes his body can heal itself. Guy explains that he used Aqua Vitae to save Narumi. It's an elixir that can cure anything, including Zonafa too. There is only one dose here and it is used for Narumi. The reason Guy chose to save Narumi was that he believed that Narumi could defeat automata, which are automatic puppets that don't need human control. The automata spread Zonafa syndrome and the group commanding them is the Midnight Circus. He explains that the doctors and nurses here played with drugs so that they could laugh in front of the kids and he was questioning a child about the position of the Midnight Circus. At this moment, an automata named Palmin is attacking this place. He controls a lot of puppets armed with various weapons. Guy uses his puppet named Olympia to defeat some of Palmin's puppets. A little girl sees the fight scene that causes her disease to return. She died in Narumi's arms because he couldn't laugh. Narumi frantically rushes outside and destroys Palmin's puppets. Narumi alone can defeat hundreds of Palmin's puppets. Palmin is forced to use his trump card which injures Narumi. However, Narumi is still able to get up and rush to defeat Palmin, and Narumi's wounds are healing on their own thanks to Aqua Vitae. Then, Narumi finishes Palmin with one punch. At the circus, Shirogane meets a girl named Vilma. The two quickly become close friends. However, Vilma is an assassin hired by the Saiga family to kill Masaru. Fortunately, Shirogane appears in time to save him. Shirogane's body is wounded by the knives launched by Vilma. She then throws a knife at Masaru but is stopped by Shirogane and defeated by Arla Quinn. Shirogane happens to notice that her wounds were healing, maybe she used to use Aqua Vitae like Narumi. Vilma wakes up and finds Masaru beside her. Shirogane says that Masaru prevented her from killing Vilma. Then Vilma also joins the circus. 
the boss sees her talent for throwing knives and immediately recruits her. At this time, Naromi and others are going to China to investigate the location of the Midnight Circus, but they are ambushed by automata on the plane. Naromi rushes to punch one of them, causing the plane to puncture a large hole. Automata also capture the cockpit and capture the children to intimidate them. They want to play a game with Naromi. If Naromi can defeat them with bare hands, they will let the plane land safely. An additional rule is that if he gets hit once, they will break one of Guy's fingers. When all of Guy's fingers are broken and Naromi is still unable to defeat them, they will kill everyone here. Fortunately, old lady Lucille recaptures the plane's cockpit. Naromi also defeats the leader. However, outside there are many clown automata attacking the plane. One of the plane's engine explodes. Even though Guy's fingers are broken, he still goes outside to fight the automata. The leader sees Guy's amazing strength and plans to destroy the remaining engine of the plane, but is pushed away by Guy. The plane crashes at a place near the circus where Shirogane and Masaru are performing. Masaru and Shirogane run to the plane. At this moment, an automata steps out of the plane to attack Masaru, but is stopped by Narumi. However, Narumi has lost his memory, so he immediately leaves. In the process of rescuing the victims trapped on the plane, they discover Guy is injured. It is a surprise to learn that Guy is Shirogane's sensei. At this time, Naromi and the old lady Lucille are searching for Naromi's master, who is said to know about the location of the Midnight Circus. Along the way, strange memories suddenly appear in Naromi's mind due to the effects of using Aquavitae. They find Naromi's master beside a stream and he also suffers from Zonafa Syndrome. Naromi immediately laughs to save him. His master tells everyone about the origins of Zonafa Syndrome and Aquavitae. It all began over 200 years ago. There was once two brothers in the Bai family of puppeteers. The other brother was Yin and the younger brother was Jin. Both wanted to create puppets that can move like humans. After eight years, they finally arrived at the home of alchemy, Prague. While studying alchemy in this place, they accidentally meet a girl named Francine. Jin fell in love with her at first sight, while Yin didn't seem to like her. However, after Yin learned that Francine was a kind girl who always sacrificed for others, he began to love her. Jin knew that Yin had fallen in love with Francine and begged Yin not to take her from him. However, Yin gave up everything to propose to Francine at church. Francine is also touched and agrees to Yin's marriage proposal. They then left without knowing that Jin had witnessed their entire conversation. That night, Jin kidnapped Francine and left Prague. Yin has been searching for the whereabouts of Francine and Jin for nine years. He finally found Jin's whereabouts. Yin bursts into Jin's house and wants to know where Francine is. Jin says that Francine was being held by the villagers because she was suffering from a dangerous disease. Yin immediately ran to Francine and said he would find a way to cure her. The villagers also came and chased Yin away. Since then, Yin researched a draw called Aquavite to cure Francine's disease. In the end, he successfully created Aquavite. But when he got to Francine's place, a fire broke out there. The villagers prevented him from saving Francine and Francine felt very sorry for Yin because she had lived with Jin for 9 years. 23 years later, Yin left the village while Jin was still there to create a puppet that looked exactly like Francine. Jin used Aquavite as a substitute for blood. However, he discovered that Francine cannot laugh. To make Francine laugh, he created intelligent puppets called automata. He then created a disease known as Zonafa Syndrome to punish the village that killed Francine 23 years ago. Six years later, Jin returned to that village and used a soft stone to create the Aquafite stream to save the entire village. However, he wanted to take responsibility for what Jin did. He jumped into the stream to merge with it. After the villagers drank water from the Aquafite stream, they inherited all of Yin's knowledge as well as his feelings about destroying all automata. Not only wonders what happened to Jim and Francine next. Suddenly, one of the four oldest automata, Pantalone, appears and says that Jin killed Francine because he realized she was just a puppet that couldn't be compared to the real Francine. However, Doll Francine is not dead yet. She created four automata to inherit her will. It is to make her laugh or, in other words, the automata must spread Zonafa Syndrome. The four oldest automata formed the Midnight Circus to inherit the will of Doll Francine. Pantalone comes here to drink Aquavite for Yin's knowledge but Naromi's master stops him and uses dynamite to destroy Aquavite here. Before he died, he left behind a dog that could sniff out Pantalone's scent and find the location of the Midnight Circus. Old Lady Lucille has gathered all the puppeteers in the world to prepare to attack the Midnight Circus. Their mission is to destroy the four oldest automata and Doll Francine. 
The battle between automata and puppeteers begins with a game. They need to overcome the challenges of the four automata to reach Dal Francine. Narami is also trying to protect his comrades, so he is seriously injured. Many puppeteers died because they could not pass the challenge. Finally, Narami and the four puppeteers reach their final destination. Opposite of them are the four oldest automata, and above them is the Dal Francine. The puppeteers rush to attack the automatas. While they are fighting, Narumi tries to reach Francine, but he is completely exhausted and has collapsed. The puppeteers also gradually lose their advantage, and one of them died. At this moment, a ball falls on this place. Inside are Lucille and the puppeteers, including Irio. Lucille also carries her puppet, which looks exactly like Francine. She orders the four oldest automata to kneel. They can't disobey their master's order, even though they know she's a fake. They put Narumi inside the ball to cure him. Lucille now has a chance to avenge her daughter, who was killed by Datore, but Datore resists Francine's orders and attacks Lucille, causing him to self-destruct. However, Lucille also dies from the deep wound. Puppeteers who use Aquavite, when they are about to die, their bodies will petrify. The doctors are trying to save Naromi because his body is also starting to petrify. The doctor used his own body parts to save Naromi, so he also started petrifying. Then the remaining three automatas can move again and begin to freely act and defeat the puppeteers. Narumi wakes up and feels that his body has been replaced with some parts and that the doctor's emotions are inside him. He immediately rushes out to fight the remaining automatas. His speed has become very fast thanks to the arms and legs that have been replaced by machines. He easily defeats the rest of the automatas and approaches Dal Francine. However, Dal Francine in front of him is just an automata created by the real Dal Francine. This means that all their sacrifices so far have been in vain. Narami gets angry and destroys Dal Francine in front of him. And that is it for today's anime summary. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your feedback down below in the comments. And as usual, please like and subscribe for more anime summaries in the future. Take it easy, everyone.